Hey y'all, today I wanted to show you exactly what we bought to build this seedling starting rack or seedling starting system with grow lights back here and kind of show you how exactly how to put it all together. This is a project that I've had on the back of my mind for a really long time. Um, as long as I've been growing plants in the garden from seeds, either you know, using window light or just putting seedling trays uh, back on the back porch, really ever since I evolved past buying those seedlings from Home Depot, like I think most of us do at some point. Uh, and I've got to say, I think, it, I think it turned out great. This setup is, um, it's not cheap per se, but under 200 total, pretty well under 200 total. It's got a ton of capacity more capacity than I think most of us are ever gonna need, certainly more capacity than I need just based on how much space I have out in the garden. Um, you can use it both for seedlings that you plan to uh, transplant outside as well as microgreen trays. And even better, you can definitely do both of those things at the same time. Again, just the benefits of having so much capacity on such a large system. Uh, plus a system like this is just going to get you more out of your garden because it allows you to pretty efficiently do succession planting, right? You can be growing seedlings on this rack to a good size uh, while those plants out in the garden that are maybe nearing the end of their life cycle but are still productive kind of finish up and then uh, quickly just replace them with uh, seedlings from indoors. So it works out really well. Stick around and I will show you exactly how to put it together if that's something that uh, sounds interesting to you. All right, let's get building. Here we've got the foundation of the whole project, a totally standard industrial metal wire shelving unit, sometimes referred to as a baker's rack. Um, these work great for starting seedlings because they're super sturdy, right? They can hold a ton of weight, but the rack itself isn't too heavy, pretty easy to move around if you need to put it in different places in the house or maybe in the garage. And they also come in a def uh, ton of different size configurations. This one here is about six feet tall, four feet wide and a foot and a half, uh, foot and a half deep, 18 inches deep. We like this size a lot because it allows us to put four standard 10 by 20 seedling trays uh, placed vertically across each shelf. Uh, so a ton of capacity again. It's also nice having a lot of shelves. So this one has basically four usable shelves in terms of seed starting because you can put something different on each shelf. So for instance, I kind of imagine having maybe this one work as our warm weather, uh, tomato, pepper, eggplant, right? All those good nightshades. Um, specifically because those are going to need a larger plot. Probably put those in three and a half inch pots or at least uh, replant them into three and a half inch pots at, at some point. Whereas maybe this, this middle one here, we might do all our cooler weather or leafy greens and we can just be having those uh, in the set standard 10 by 20, 72 cell trays and we can be just rotating those out really quickly and then maybe at the bottom or on the lower layers, we could be doing micro green trays and just be cycling those through. And so that's really convenient to be able to be kind of working um, on a number of different types of plants at the same time. You certainly don't have to fill up each shelf. Again, that's a, that's a ton of plants, but it just gives you the flexibility to sort of configure each section of the shelf to serve a different purpose. And I really like that. Um, you can definitely build your own shelving unit. We, we consider that, but I think for the price and particularly if you just want to get going and start some seedlings, these are a really good option. They're popular for a reason. And again, you're just, you're, you're really unlikely to do any significant damage to this, right? The water's not going to hurt it. You might need to put down a tarp underneath it if you're worried about the floor beneath. Um, but the shelving unit itself is, is, is going to last you a really long time. And we like that. Um, and also they're everywhere. They're totally ubiquitous, super easy to find. Wait for a sale. They do go on sale pretty often. All right, let's go ahead and take a closer look at what all you're going to need to outfit the rack with to start some seedlings. Let's do it. First off, you'll probably want a seedling heat mat to germinate warm weather seeds at a good rate and to help cool weather seeds germinate faster. If your setup's in a relatively warm spot, you can definitely get away without one of these, but they're nice to have if you want to churn out lots of seedlings fast. This one's a huge 48 inch wide by 20 inch deep version that covers an entire shelf. Next up is the star of the build, grow lights. 
Plant lighting is a fascinating but complicated topic. The short story is standard LED shop lights like this one actually work really well for growing seedlings up to the point of transplant. We're using two of these 5,000 Kelvin, 4,000 lumen lights on each shelf. Make sure you're buying lights with at least 2,000, preferably 3,000 lumens, and in the 5,000 to 6,500 Kelvin range. Of course, you need a way to hang or attach your lights to the rack. We're using a set of simple chains that came with the lights. An S-hook makes it really easy to just hook the chain to the lights, whether yours came with something similar or if you need to DIY a connection. We like the S-hook solution, but ours didn't come with an extra for the other side, unfortunately. Luckily, that's an easy fix. We use a pair of pliers to ever so gently open up the last link in the chain. This creates a makeshift S-hook on the opposite end that we can hook directly over the wire shelf above the light or loop over the chain itself to easily adjust the height of the light, like so. These reusable Velcro ties are awesome for keeping all those messy wires neat and tidy. You're gonna need something similar or you're just gonna be constantly fishing wires out of your seedlings. I've been there. I like the Velcro better than zip ties because I'm constantly fiddling with the layout. Pick up a $5 timer plug and enjoy never worrying about turning lights on or off again. We run our grow lights for 17 hours a day right now using this magic plug. This is a furniture anchor and your shelf probably came with one, but you may want to consider adding an extra if you set up in a high traffic area of the house. I've got kids around and these give me some extra peace of mind personally. Last up, we've got some standard 10 by 20 drainless propagation trays to put the seedling cells into. You 100% need these to keep water off the electronics. As a bonus, they work great to create a dark period if you're running microgreen trays. I like to look for ones made with food grade plastic personally. All right, now let me show you how to put it all together. We're gonna start by hanging two lights from each shelf. I like to hang them on their lowest setting, at least to begin with, because we can keep these lights pretty darn close to the seedlings. They put off very little heat, so there's not a lot of risk of light burn. If you picked up lights with a lower lumen value, consider increasing the number of lights per shelf to at least three. When you go to plug in all your lights, make sure that your timer plug is set to the timer setting rather than the bypass setting. Otherwise, your lights are always gonna be on. Go ahead and connect the lights together at this point. To start, I've got all four daisy chained, but plan to separate them out shelf by shelf in the future. Next up, get those heat mats down on the shelf. In my experience, for best results, leave the heat mats on until the plants are fully germinated, and then go ahead and turn them off completely. Okay, laying down propagation trays is pretty straightforward but just remember that it's okay to play around with the layout and find what works best for you. Don't forget to clean up those wires. You're gonna thank me later. Finally, I like to check the light output with a Photon app. I'm looking for DLI values of at least 10 for cool weather or 15 for warm weather plants. Hello again. Uh, weird blank spot where there used to be a seedling rack, right? We're gonna get to that in a second. Uh, but first, just want to show off some seedlings. Those suckers are looking good. We've got chrysanthemum greens, we've got multiple kinds of lettuce, we've got spinach, we've got arugula, we've got cosmos, we've got uh, Johnny Jump Ups, we've got bachelor buttons. Just tried a bunch of different things in this test tray. They're all from dollarseed.com. Uh, side note, I really like them. Overall, everything's germinated really well. Possible exception of the Johnny Jump Ups. Um, and it's grown really well. Uh, super happy with the results. And the fact that I'm sitting here with a, a seed tray in front of me full of super healthy plants that are ready to go outside, despite the fact that the last three weeks here have been cold and rainy and overcast and that the plants that I put into the ground, direct sowed into the ground, similar kinds of plants, 
weeks earlier are tiny and struggling and frankly are doing pretty poor, uh, I think it's just a good testament to how um, useful it is to have an indoor grow light system like this one that we've been talking about. So yeah, really, really happy. Um, in total, the system ended up costing about $178. We've got a written build guide on our website, nextdoorhomestead.com, if you want to go there for all the details. I also have a lot more just information in general, more details, more links out to the references I used to, to put this thing together um, that I just wasn't able to fit into, into this length of a video. Also talked a lot about the upsides of this project, right? Um, I've kind of gushed about it, but it's only fair to talk about the downsides too. So uh, first off, why is there a blank space behind me where there used to be the seedling rack? Um, I've actually moved the whole thing down into our garage. Um, strange reason, I actually just ended up not liking the smell of all of the plastic trays, the propagation trays, the seedling trays, the uh, heat mats. Um, yeah, all of this gear in this small room, my home office, that I spend a lot of time in. So I ended up moving it down into the garage, and I think that's probably going to work out better for me, just personal preference. Um, another downside that I've, I've noticed is doing the test tray is that you have to be pretty thoughtful with your timing and your planning, um, particularly what's going into a single tray um, or what's going onto a single shelf. If you look at, again, just taking a quick look at this tray, we've got these giant cosmos that germinated really quickly. Um, and grew really quickly. And then right next to them, we have these Johnny Jump Ups, which terminated really slow. Um, my first time growing them and are growing really slow. Uh, and the challenge there, right, is that on each shelf, you've got a light and you can move it up and down and, and maybe you can tilt it on one axis and you can, you can do that. But ultimately that's all the give that you have. Um, so it's a lot easier if your plants on a given shelf or on a, a given tray are, are the same size. Small downside, but something to be thinking about. Um, let's see, the LED shop lights are, they're super efficient for their output, like unbelievably so, just even compared to what would be available to you if you're building something like this a few years ago. But they draw power and that, that power costs more on an ongoing basis than the sunlight outside. Um, it's not free to run. I, I do think that if you are being careful with turning off heat mats after the germination phase and uh, you're packing a lot of your plants in at once as much as possible onto a single shelf running running sort of you know two to three lights on that shelf, what, whatever makes sense uh, based on what you bought, you're probably going to be pretty happy with the ROI. Um, I think I think it's uh, the benefits far outweigh the cost. Um, real quick, in terms of future improvements, I'm gonna be buying more lights so that I can plant on all four shelves concurrently rather than just the two shelves. I don't think I'm gonna need more heat mats than I have, um, but I do need more lights. I also plan to make some reflective covers to go around each shelf, uh, probably do four different covers that I can just uh, snap onto a shelf at a time. And I'll be lining those covers with either something like Panda Film or Mylar Sheet, something highly reflective that just is gonna end up increasing the total number of photons actually reaching the plants. Uh, grow them a little bit faster, a little bit healthier. Finally, I'm in the process right now of adding a small fan to each shelf for airflow. Um, where I had the rack before, right here, uh, I was able to really easily draw a ton of air over uh, multiple shelves at a time, just using a window fan right next to it. And that worked really nice. Uh, and I liked that, but obviously not possible in the garage. So that's that's an easy upgrade and, and probably something that you're gonna wanna do as well. Um, and that's, that's about it. I, I really hope that this video has been helpful and that maybe you're a little bit more excited about getting gardening this year, thinking about the possibilities. I, I really truly am myself. Um, I plan to record a few follow-up videos as well, just on the finer details of actually uh, planting your seeds and using the rack on a day-to-day -day basis. I feel like I've I've learned a lot of little tricks and nuances um, just going through some of these uh, early tests uh, that I'd like to pass along. So if you are interested in something like that, um, yeah, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, uh, keep a lookout, and uh, hopefully you'll be seeing me again here soon. Cheers.